And did what? Oh, you mean when she stopped menstruating, her sex life would end? <laughs> well, it is sometimes rather, rather strange and frightening. And of course, that's what I say, too, that people must assume the responsibility for some of their own knowledge. I don't know that the academic community can pour it all over them, like the, you know, basting all these turkeys sitting in classrooms. I think that has special meaning to my son. <laughs> I think there has to be a great deal of self-questing. The knowledge is there if you want to look for it. Well, yesterday we, dealt, we talked to some of the girls in the dorms, and they were complaining about some of the things that are happening in the student health services here. But nobody would ever asked a question why. And uh, they were talking about a $10 charge that's inflicted when you go in for birth control. But it isn't imposed for anything else. If you go in for VD treatment, there's no charge. If you go in for contraception, it costs $10. It's like you don't know how you get VD or that, um, you know, that the contraception and the VD might be very comfortably linked together. And, you know, I think it would be very appropriate for a group of students to ask a few questions. But they'll sit there until the university asks it for them. And that's what I was trying to get across is, you know, be a little motivated to do something for yourself. Put down your own toilet seat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you bring up a, a point that really intrigues me. It's just one very highly educated group of people I'm thinking about, namely physicians. Physicians, for example, in the student health service who refuse to prescribe contraception to an underage person. Physicians in a community who price themselves out of the abortion market because they don't want to provide that service for women, who refuse to be Well, the same problems you mentioned we work with in Planned Parenthood and family planning programs. We have doctors in rural areas that won't see patients. Uh, of course, the laws, the changing laws are helping a little bit now, too. I think the only thing you got to do is some kind of consciousness awareness with a physician also. Sometimes in small communities, if we can get one doctor to help in a clinic, then pretty soon the others will follow along. Uh, if you can bring to their attention that if they don't help this woman with contraception, they're going to be delivering her babies free because she's not going to pay them. And somebody's got to deliver those babies. I think the whole thing's got to be consciousness awareness, and I think a lot of it has to come from the medical schools. And that, again, gets you into the academic environment. There has to be um, an education for doctors that they are dealing with people and not parts and pieces, and some kind of an awareness of what the social being is that they are dealing with. It's really a difficult problem, and we've all had troubles with it, those that are in and those that are out. And we have problems with it with abortion, too. If anyone else has any other answers to this, I'd, is Dr. Myers here? She might have some better answers. I think they're doing a great deal more, or attempting to do, and it comes slowly. I can remember being here in Planned Parenthood when we were trying to get sex education in the schools and we realized we didn't have any trained teachers. And then the next thing we had to do was start training teachers. And I think this is what we have to be doing with doctors too. We've got to get into the medical schools. I, I would be interested if anyone had experience on trying to like that. What, for the medical schools? Uh, no, for a university town. Great. Listen, we've used every tool you can think of, like playing golf with his wife, um, or, uh, or finding, out, finding out who his friends are so you can put the screws on them to get the doctor to cooperate with the program. And sometimes you almost have to precondition your patient that if you're gonna, if you're gonna go to, into the doctor who works with our clinic, because he's the only doctor we can possibly get, just try to ignore the shit he's laying on you. 
get your method and get out, you know, and then we'll help you deal with the rest of it. And it's unfortunate, but true. But we're finding more and more good doctors. And so then we have nurses or social workers or counselors who take up the counseling gap because the doctors aren't doing it. And this was one of the things I was hearing yesterday, too, that some of the doctors in the student health services are being pretty judgmental with the kids. And the kids are feeling this. But no one's ever gone to talk to those people. You know, again, they sit like the great turkeys wasting, waiting for everybody else. Well, I think there's got to be a great deal more coming together of what there is right here and opening to change. Of course, that's the whole thing. There's no communication between the students themselves, between, the re between people in a relationship, between the, the whole university thing. There's either none or there's a lack of or gaps. And I don't know how you ever fill all of them in either. You're right, they need to be doing some questioning and some looking. Comments? If not, I guess we can stand adjourned. Is that right? Thank you.